Hey YouTube, it's Angie and today is Sunday, February 19th, 2017 and um, I'm so excited. I'm heading somewhere right now. Um, if you can see that contraption in the back of my car, it's a spinning wheel. So today I'm getting a spinning lesson from a friend of mine. Um, so excited because I tried doing it by myself, so completely frustrated. Um, spinning is a is a true craft and uh, it's best to learn from somebody who's experienced and uh, can kind of teach you a lot of people who learn how to spin you know learned from their their mom or their grandma or something when they were little and it's kind of like passed down generation to generation um, so it, it's truly a, a craft and it's something that you have to like really learn how to do and spend a lot of time doing it. So this girl I'm going to spin with has been spinning for about 10 years. Um, and I mean, I don't know anyone else in my area currently who spins wool. So I'm super excited to go do this. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that she will be willing to let me um, record her demonstrating what, what she's you know, showing me and teaching me. Um, and then after that, um, I'll just give like a quick, my take on everything. Cause I'm still so new to this that I feel like I haven't given it enough of a chance to even, um, say like what my future holds with spinning. I'm hoping my future is a bright one <laughs> with spinning cause I do want to spin wool. I would also like to grow cotton and spin cotton. Um, so I do really want to learn the art of spinning and, uh, you know, have it become one of my many passions in life. Um, you know, I'll be raising Angora rabbits. Eventually I'd want to get into, you know, sheep, hair sheep. Um, so I, I really am hoping <laughs> that this is not going to be something that I'm going to really learn how to do and be like, I don't think I want to do this. <laughs> There's a chance that might happen, but I'm hoping not. I'm hoping that, um, this is really something that, um, you know, I can learn to do and teach others how to do. Even my husband was like, when you learn how to spin, I might want you to teach me because <laughs> it seems kind of fun. <laughs> so, um, hopefully everything works out and I like it and if not then who knows what my future holds but I'm going to be filling you all in on the details on everything that um you know I learned today and hopefully really I really hope that she'll let me um you know record her demonstrating I haven't asked her yet so um I don't even know if she knows I have a YouTube channel so yep 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 that's it, y'all. I'm going to probably pick this up when we're at Starbucks. And then um, just let you guys know what I think of everything. So we shall see. All right. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Okay, everybody. This is my awesome teacher, Samantha. Hi. And she's spinning some of her wool right now. Um, she hand dyes this herself and she taught me how to spin and I'm super comfortable with it. Now this is my spinning wheel and this is the crappy wool that I spun <laughs> but you got to expect that when you first start out. So um, Samantha, tell us a little bit about this type of wool that you have right here. So this wool is off of multiple sheep and then I blend the different breeds together well actually I send it to the mill and they do it and then it comes back as roving and I dye the roving and what breed sheep are these? this is Clune Forest Border Lester and Wednesday Dale okay. and how long have you been spinning? Um, just over five years. Okay, I was wrong. It's not ten years. <laughs> it was five I years. wish. <laughs>
I've been knitting and crocheting a lot longer than 10, but only spinning about five, just over. All right, why don't you break your, um, your roving and show how to start a draft. All right, so you're, to start, um, you're gonna start spinning your wheel, hold the end. You're gonna take your roving and you just kind of let the previous strand take it. And then to draft, you don't want your twist coming past your pinching finger. And then you just pull lightly with your other hand in the back and just feed it through. Guys, it's not as easy <laughs> as you may as it may look. Um, I highly suggest that you find someone like Samantha here to teach you how to do it. Um, I still taught myself how to knit and crochet and loom knit and all that fun stuff. But there's just some things that you just need that extra help with. And I think spinning is one of those things. So it's totally worth the money to invest into that. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I was not able to self-teach myself. I spent hundreds and hundreds on lessons. And I think that's the reason why I teach now, just to give someone the affordable option to have a private lesson that's not in a classroom with 20 other people, right. and you're not spending, you know, $300 per lesson. Right. Now, let's talk real quick, and it'd be awesome if you could just speak up slightly, because I'm going to be backing away. If you can explain the differences between your spinning wheel and my old-fashioned looking spinning wheel. Okay, so the main difference really is the position that the wheel is set up in. Um, my wheel, everything is straight up and down where yours is side to side. Our actual spinning um, mechanisms with the flyer and the tension are completely the same. Uh, my wheel is just under the flyer where yours is next to it. And then our other main difference is going to be you have one pedal. I have two. Right. Okay. Um, so other than that, we really don't have any difference. Um, my wheel can also fold in half for easy storage. So you would just take the knob on the bottom off and uh -huh. the wheel and flyer is just going to fold down over the pedals and it lays nice and flat. Okay. Um, where your wheel is. Okay, so we had some technical difficulties involving me clearing out sp storage space on my phone. Now, um, I'll eventually do a video of me spinning on my wheel just to show what I'm doing. Not like I'm some professional, but just to show you how like these old fashioned um, type of wheels work. Uh, Samantha said mine probably is about 50 or 60 years old. Where hers is way more modern. And um, I mean, this wheel has probably been, Lendrum has been making these for over probably 30 years, I think. Um, okay, wait, what brand is this? A Lendrum. Lendrum? Okay. Mm -hmm. And mine is what? In Ashford Traditional. Okay. Alright. So where did you get this wool from? Um, this wool is from my backyard. <laughs> um, I shear all my sheep myself. And then anything that I don't have time or don't have all the equipment to hand process, I send it all to a local mill in Lancaster County. And it comes back as roving. And then from there, I dye my roving. Um, and then I just... Everything is spinnable. Look how pretty this wool is. I love the colors that you blend together here. There's all kinds of really cool, like, artsy kind of colored yarn. I really love what's going on to the market these days and what people are willing to make on their own. Mm -hmm. Here's just a few of the different yarns that there we go. I've done recently. And you said this was plied with thread, right? Yep, this is a thread ply, and this is a ply against itself. Okay. Very cool. Very beautiful, too. I just love it. I really like spinning, and I thought that I might wind up hating it, but I think I wound up loving it. Um, 
but it does seem a lot easier when you have a more modern type of wheel. Um, I highly personally recommend these types of wheels over an old-fashioned kind of cool looking wheel. I mean even though mine may look cooler, at least I think it does, <laughs> I think it looks cooler because you can use it as like decor for your house or whatever. It's definitely not more practical in my opinion. Um, what, are, what is your opinion? Does it not matter to you? I think personally for the spinning aspect, the Lendrum is definitely a lot easier to spin on. Uh -huh. um, but look-wise, the old-fashioned definitely look more appealing to most people. And when you say spinning, that's what everyone thinks of. They don't think of this as a spinning wheel. Yeah, I didn't even know that these were like legit spin spinning wheels until I started researching it myself. Yep. When I thought of a spinning wheel, I always thought of something like that. Never thought of something like this. Yep. And this is really, really a neat little contraption. I like that it's portable. Yes, it's very portable. Right, right. And they have ones that are even more portable that are a lot smaller. Like I have one, it probably sits about this high. Wow, and so it has that's like below your knees. Yep, and it literally has a handle behind the wheel, so you just pick it up and go. Okay, cool. And it just sits it's like that wide, like that tall, and it just spins just like this. Uh -huh. Double pedal and everything. So if somebody, if somebody had more questions and they wanted to ask you, or if they were interested in lessons or something, how would they contact you? Um, they can contact me by phone at 610-662-5124, mm -hmm. or you can reach me at email at samanthajfiberfarm at gmail.com. Do you have any Facebook groups, or can they follow you um, on Facebook? I have, my Facebook is Samantha J's Fiber Farm. Samantha J's Fiber Farm. Yep. And it's a picture of an alpaca as the profile picture. Okay, cool. So, here's her card. In case you didn't catch any of that. And it's not focusing, of course. <laughs> Alright, maybe I'll just have to post the picture in the um, as the thumbnail or I'll just link her information down below. So be sure to check her out if you have any questions or you want to um, connect with her or if maybe you want to get some lessons or something uh, and maybe even some wool or even some of her hand spun yarn so thanks for checking this out I'll follow up I guess in the car ride home bye hey everybody so my final thoughts on spinning I came into spinning saying to myself I'm either gonna love it or I'm gonna hate it and I have to say I love it now that I understand how to do it I've practiced it. I feel confident with it. Um, I, th I think I love it. Um, it's really relaxing. Um, it's very soothing. Um, I, I really recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Um, now there's a, a whole bunch of different ways that you can go about doing this. You can um, raise your own animals or you can buy the wool off of people or you can trade for wool for people from people. So she raises sheep, she has a llama, she has um, hair goats. Um, so she's got um, lots of cool, you know, sources of her own wool. She also has Angora rabbits, and that's how we met, because um, I have Angora rabbits. Um, so there's a lot of real, you know, a lot of sources that you can get wool from. And, and raw wool like that is really affordable too if you don't want to raise an animal but you want to spin um, so I mean it's really a lot of fun I highly recommend though that you get yourself a teacher because I'll tell you I was able to teach myself how to knit I was able to teach myself how to crochet um, I've self-taught myself all of this through like YouTube and just repetitive watching but I think with them um, spinning there's just some things you don't really get through someone just telling you you have to kind of feel it and experience it yourself through um, actual direction from somebody and somewhere someone who you can like ask questions to and you know that one-on-one -on -one support I think is super super valuable um, 
I wouldn't get into more than like a group of three people who were getting trained on how to spin. Um, I wouldn't join a big class of like 20 people. I would want to be able to um, have like that one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation with somebody. And any more than like three people, I think that's, you're not going to get that. But if you get that teaching, if you get that one-on-one -on -one support, you you will be able to get it. If, trust me, if someone like me can get it, anybody can get it. Um, I'm super new to anything to do with the wool and uh, yarn world. And so, if uh, trust me, if I could do it, anybody can do it. Um, and it's totally a lot of fun. Now, if you're in the southeast Pennsylvania area, I highly recommend you connect with Samantha. I'm going to link her information down below um, and, you know, just give you her phone number and stuff like that because I don't know if you guys had a hard time hearing in the Starbucks um, or whatnot, so I'm going to link that, <laughs> put her information down below so you can check her out. Um, and even if you're far away, um, she will ship wool to you, um, or if you just want her hand spun yarn, you can, you know, probably purchase that from her. Um, and so, yeah, check her out. She's really nice, super cool, um, and really experienced and knowledgeable. She's really a wealth of information. And I just want to add that when you're heading to the homesteading community, I'm telling you, like, creating relationships is so key and so vital. You'll never be able to do, um, learn, and create everything on your own that you're going to need to survive. It's just not going to happen. You need, you need a, a, a community of people who share the same interests and all specialize in different things, you know, and when you have that, you can trade, you can barter, you can you know, help each other out, teach each other skills. Um, there's just so much to be, there's so much to understand when it comes to creating relationships. You may be going out into the middle of, the, of nowhere to escape the world, but you can't like, you know, I, I'm sure some people do, but going out and being solitary isn't necessarily your best, um, your best bet. You're going to want to create that, that community around you. You want to have them relationships that um, you can lean on one another for support. So, anyway, um, I hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like, give me a thumbs up. It really makes um, doing these videos, makes me feel like I'm doing something valuable, you know, and that I'm helping other people in, in some way or, you know, giving people inspiration or something. Because if this city girl can do this stuff, anybody can. Um, and so, you know, if you haven't subscribed already, just go ahead and subscribe. Um, I post like a few videos every single week. And, uh, you know, if you think that this was something kind of cool and you want to share it with others, then share it. Share it on Facebook. Like, whoa, people still spin. This is like crazy. Or if you already know about spinning, then you know, like, man, I really want to do this. So, yeah, share this video if you feel compelled. Like and subscribe. And um, if you have any questions, go ahead and, you know, comment down below so I can answer them. Uh, and, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's super long, sorry. But I really wanted to share this, this experience with everybody because I'll never you know, anytime soon be able to do a how-to video on spinning, um, because it's, I'm so inexperienced, <laughs> so I'm in no position to how-to anything, um, this was just my experience of spinning the first time, and yeah, but I will be posting updates on spinning soon, um, so you can see what a disaster spinning looks like <laughs> when you first start out, because it does, it is a disaster. So anyways, if you want to see my disaster spinning videos, definitely subscribe. <laughs> anyways, I'll talk to y'all later. All right, bye.